Sometimes you just like nice things. And sometimes you just like nice things made by Walther. And today we're going to talk about two of the nicest things that Walther has ever made in its roughly 140 year history in existence. And those are the Q4SF and the P88 Compact. And these are just kind of Walther's flagship models, but they represent very different eras in handgun history. So I think it's going to be an interesting discussion. So stay tuned. It was a smoking gun. It was a smoking gun. It was a smoking gun. What's up, folks? So, I thought this would be an interesting comparison, not because these guns are alike, but because they're so different. Yet, even though they are very different, they're made by the same company, and they're kind of intended to fill the same market niche, and that's just like a super premium service pistol. S still a production pistol, these aren't like custom-made guns, but they're, they're about as nice of a gun as you're gonna get. Um, you know, that's a production pistol that comes off an assembly line and so forth. Again, they represent very different eras in handgun history. The P88 Compact represents the epitome of, of a super premium pistol in the 90s. So it kind of represents the Wonder 9 era. It's double action, single action, you know, aluminum alloy frame. It is the gold standard, I think, for what a Wonder 9 wanted to be. <laughs> it is the ultimate aspirational Wonder 9, and the Q4SF is like the pinnacle, really nice, really high-end striker-fired pistol. It's, you know, we see the striker-fired lineage of, of handguns kind of maturing over the past 20 years, and this is all what it led to, and you've got a super nice metal frame pistol with a really nice trigger and just a superb fit and finish. So, both really premium guns from different eras and very different guns, very different feel. Um, but at the same time, they both kind of have that Walther magic. And Walther as a brand, I think is just, it has this X factor to it that I think, you know, for Walther fans and fans of really nice handguns, we just kind of get it. And, you know, Walther to me is always kind of like the Mercedes Benz of of guns and it has a, a certain prestige to it that even stuff like H and K and you know Sig Sauer when Sig Sauer was still like a European brand they, they don't really compare to, to what Walther brings to the table and both these guns kind of capture that X factor in terms of, of just the, the Walther-ness that I think I think we, we, we understand and we get and we just like. So the P88 series originated in the early 1980s as Walther's entrant into the U.S. military service pistol competition. And it was designed for that purpose. And as most of you know, I'm sure, it, it did compete in the XM9 trials of, you know, 1983 and 1984, and it didn't do that well. It was actually f Walther's first um, handgun that used a tilting barrel lockup, a, you know, conventional pistol layout. Prior to this, their, you know, flagship handgun product was the P5, and this is built on the old school Walther P38 system, which uses the, the locking block like the Beretta 92 uses. I think that the P88 series really had two things working against it, you know, since its inception. It was somewhat rushed into production to kind of, you know, make the deadline for those trials in the mid-80s. If you think about the Beretta 92 and the SIG P38, 
P220 series, those had been in development since the mid-70s. They were more mature, they had been iterated, they had been tweaked, and, uh, you know, not surprisingly, those did the best in the trials, and Walther was still just kind of working out the kinks in the, the original P88 design. Also, it was just very, very expensive. I think, you know, Walther got hung up on this idea of making the most premium, most accurate, tightly fit service pistol, and I, I guess they were trying to differentiate based on that, but it didn't make sense for what the U.S. military was looking for. Didn't catch on. It had some, it had some breakages, like the frame cracked um, up here in the dust cover during the trials, and the sights broke off. I, I don't suspect it wasn't reliable. I, I've never heard that the P88 series wasn't all, wasn't reliable. So after that, they sold it. They sold the P88 full size on the commercial market beginning in 1987, and again, it didn't do that well. So. They kind of rethought what the P88 was going to be in, from a commercial standpoint, and they simplified it, they made it a little smaller, and, you know, potentially a little more affordable, and they came out with the P88 Compact. And from what I gather, the P88 Compact wasn't necessarily supposed to be a, a companion to, to the full-size P88, it was supposed to replace it. The slide is just a little bit shorter. The grip is shorter and less bulky. They, the original P88 had this super complex, like, multi-function lever system that would decock the gun and it also function as a slide release. You saw that kind of thing on, um, on the HK P9S and, and also the earlier P5, which I have here, it has similar universal lever, but, um, they did away with that in the interest of simplicity, and the thing still didn't sell all that well. It, again, it was very expensive, and you know, the, this is a super tightly fit, almost target grade gun. And as they were kind of selling off the last of the P88s, Walther realized that they needed to kind of shift gears and focus on something more pragmatic. Glock was really um, coming to prominence in the 90s, and they kind of realized that polymer frame striker fired pistols were the wave of the future and they needed to have something to compete in that niche, so they came up with the P99. And uh, I have a full review on the P99, so definitely check that out. This was not a cheap pistol by any means, but it was way more affordable than a P88, and um, the P99 ended up doing well. The cool thing about the P99 is though it is a, you know, polymer frame striker fired pistol, it is a double action, single action pistol like the P88 and uh, like the, the Wonder 9s that were still kind of prominent in the 90s. They had some different trigger systems. One was called the QA and that had more of a partially cocked striker system, kind of like a Glock. And that evolved into the P99Q and we never had the P99Q in the United States. It was kind of um, a service pistol that was used overseas in Europe. I think the um, in uh, the Netherlands, the uh, Dutch police use the P99Q, and again, it has a, a partially cocked striker mechanism. And then around 2011, they kind of gave us a version of the P99Q for the American market, and that um, became what we know is the PPQ. And the key difference being the PPQ has a fully cocked single action striker fire trigger. So in, in a sense, the PPQ gives us the, the single action trigger from the P99, and that's the only trigger you get in the PPQ. The PPQ did well, it became popular, it became known for having a really nice striker fire trigger. And then in the, um, I think it was 2019, 2020, Walther decided to kind of reclaim some of its super premium roots that they walked away from with the P88 series and create a PPQ that lived up to the legacy of the P88. And so initially they, that took the form of a big, huge competition style gun. And, you know, they gave it a steel frame, gave it a five inch barrel, put some fancy like cuts on the slide. And um, that became the Q5 SF, but it was essentially a PPQ with a steel frame. And then they offered a, basically a service duty sized duty oriented pistol based on uh the steel frame ppq architecture and that is this the q4 sf this has the ppq trigger in it it's is really not different than any other trigger in the ppq and the walther fully cocked striker fire triggers are just known to be excellent and everybody kind of knows they are 
the cream of the crop when it comes to striker fire triggers. And um, it's just super, super crisp, really nice. They're both very reliable. I've, I've never had any kind of malfunction with either of these guns and I've, I've shot the P88 a little more, you know, I've had it longer and, um, you know, I've put all kinds of ammo through it. I've put crummy remanufactured ammo through it. I've, I've shot it reasonably dirty and it, it runs anything you put in it. I've ran some hollow points through it, runs those. So very reliable gun, not surprising because it was designed as a service pistol, but same with the, the PPQ. And I've, I've had a, a P99 for years and you know, very similar. Again, basically the same gun as, as the PPQ series. The PPQ series came from the P99. And all, these guns run everything, and they're just kind of known for that. Um, if you look at, like, Ben Stoger, Ben Stager, Stager Stoger, he, he's popular right now. He has a lot of interesting videos on shooting, competition shooting on YouTube, and he talks about the Walther PDP platform, which is, you know, a version of the PPQ, and they just run everything. And so, since we're talking about two extremely bougie high-end guns, I guess we should talk a little bit about the fit and finish, and um, it's excellent on both of them. The machining on the Q4 is is just exquisite. I mean, it's like it like if you look at the um, the rail system here, and I'm not a big fan of rails on guns. I like honestly, I like the classic look of guns like this better, just from a purely aesthetic standpoint, but. I mean, this gun is like a sculpture. It, it is a work of art, and I don't know that I have a gun that is, is this precise, and it's just beautiful. And, um, you know, it, it's somewhat simple. It, it's not, it looks like a striker-fired gun. It's just black. It's not ostentatious in that regard. You know, this is the version without the optics cut, which, <laughs> which I greatly prefer. A gun that's this beautiful, I don't necessarily want a c-section on the top of the slide to put an optic and uh, you know it's super it's super accurate with or without an optic so and i got it for a better price i you know managed to get this for like 800 and some bucks which is a hell of a deal and um, most of the time you see these selling for um over a thousand and the the fit on it is is really good i mean there's it really doesn't have any it's just a touch of play on the slide to frame fit. The lines on it are just amazing. There are no machine marks that I can see. Everything is just beautiful and really well machined. And you put these really nice G10 grips on it from Lock, and it is just a wonderful package. And like I said, I just love the classic lines of, of the P88. It is, it is so beautiful, and um, the proportions are just are just great to my eye. The fit and finish is amazing, as you can t as you can imagine, and I honestly think the P88 is is a little even tighter than uh, than the Q4, and and like you can see it just squeeze into battery there. It's so tightly fit, and the the rails are just you know super tight. They're full length, and there's. There is zero play in this thing. It is just insanely tight, and you know you see this kind of build muzzle area, and that helps tighten up the lockup in in the front in the muzzle, and it's just really an amazing gun from that standpoint. And uh, the the finish on on the the flats of the slide is this beautiful classic bluing, which you don't see anymore on guns really, and it's just lovely. Everything is is machined and cut. The slide serrations are perfectly cut. I mean, it is everything's just straight and really nicely done. There's zero play in the trigger, and it is it is just like a bank vault. I mean, the thing is just an instrument of precision all all around.
So, how do they shoot? In a nutshell, I, I would say the Q4 has a more responsive feel, whereas the P88 Compact has a more precise feel. And I, I think that comes down mainly to how they handle recoil and the difference in how the triggers feel. And with the Q4, you've got this super heavy duty all steel frame and the gun weighs 40 ounces. And it, it not only absorbs the recoil and, and just, it makes it mild shooting, but the, the weight and the mass of the frame just seem to like channel the recoil in a way that makes it more informative and, and makes it very engaging. You really get a good feel when this gun's cycling. The recoil impulse is is more linear, I think, than what you experience on a polymer frame, PPQ or P99. And the, the polymer frame P99s and PPQs and PDPs, they can be a little snappy. And, and if you go into forums and stuff, you can hear people talk about that. But with the with this heavy duty steel frame, again, it, it just, that weight, I think, kind of translates the recoil into something that's more usable, something that's more tangible, and something that just kind of elevates your your shooting. And uh, it feels more flat when you're shooting it. It's kind of this this slower, more, more relaxed wallop. It's kind of like a piston moving back and forth in your hand. It has a very unique feel. It's it's really nice. And you know, the the PPQ slash PDP style trigger is just well known for its crisp responsive feel and it feels really good and uh, it's just it's just nice. There's some take up and there's some creep still before the break, but the break is just is really crisp and engaging and it's it's almost understated and it's just a really nice trigger it's a trigger you just want to shoot the the ergos are um are really well thought out on it and a lot of people don't like the hump on um on the walther pistols like uh the p99 has has the hump as well and honestly so does the p88 as you can see here but i i feel like it it does a good job at informing the placement of your trigger finger and it helps you just control it and it feels really good and then when you add these G10 grips into the mix these are from Lock it really just makes the the pistol cling to your hands and it's super controllable and it's 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 really really nice to shoot now the P88 compact I, I've never experienced a gun that has this level of, of precision to it. I mean, everything about this gun is just tight and precise. The, the slide to frame fit is just seamless. Everything is just like a precision instrument. I mean, this thing is like a scalpel. The ergonomics feel good, it points well, and the, the single action trigger, again, it, it has that super precise character to it. It's not the most crisp and responsive snap I've I've felt on on a single action trigger and honestly the I think the the break itself is is just a little bit more satisfying on the Q4 but again it's so precise. You have a little take up but it's just very planted, it's very defined and it's it's arc of movement and you've got this over travel stop and you know the travel's very short. It's just like I said, super precise. It's like shooting a scalpel, but and it's very accurate because of that, as as you as you can imagine. But it can feel a little clinical, and I it just you don't quite get the feedback and the feel that you get with um, with the Q4. And even though this does have a metal frame, and in metal frames, I feel like always transmit a bit more feel than a polymer frame in general. Like, it, this is such, you know, compared to the Q4, it's so much lighter overall. Like, the, the slide is thinner and just much less massive. The, the frame is aluminum alloy as opposed to steel, so it's much lighter. And it's just a smaller gun overall. And you definitely feel that when you're shooting it. It, it compared to the Q4, this thing can feel kind of snappy. And it kind of surprised me, because I'd been shooting the Q4, um you know, for the past couple range trips and I, you know, 
putting it through its paces and I hadn't shot this in a while and like I, it was almost slapping my trigger finger until I, I kind of got used to it again. But then, you know, I threw the first few shots when I, when I shot this, you know, I was shooting these side by side. When I switched to this, I kind of threw the first few shots and um, wasn't shooting it great. But once I got it dialed in, man, this, this trigger is so precise and I feel like I, you know, I put a few strings of shots like through the same hole, like right on the X in the bullseye. So I think this will ultimately give you more precision, but I feel like this just has a better feel overall. I was still shooting very nice, precise groups with this, but it's just a little more with this. I think the P88 probably has target gun potential in, ter in terms of its lockup, in terms of its just overall build. One thing I forgot to mention is the double action pull on the P88C and overall it's pretty good. It's not super light. It's, I don't know, 10 pounds or maybe a little more, but it's, it's pretty smooth throughout and it does stack a little, but it's... I guess what I'd call a linear stack and that it does increase in weight slightly as you go through the um, stroke, but it's, it's kind of seamless. You don't notice it all that much. And then it's got that nice over travel stop where it, you know, if you're mashing through that pull, it doesn't jerk the gun and throw your sights off. So that's nice. Uh, for me, the trigger reach is pretty long and, you know, I can get my fingertip on it to, to get through the pull, but it reminds me a lot of like a CZ 75 in terms of the double action trigger reach, which are just kind of known for having a long reach. And that's certainly the case with the P88. So at the end of the day, like I said, they're both very accurate. They're they're very satisfying to shoot, and I enjoy shooting both of them, but they're very different. If you're a fan of, of really nice guns and, and you're a fan of Walther's, they're both worth owning. Um, but again, they're, they're very different uh, takes on what premium shootability is. Now, as far as the practical considerations for these pistols, here is where I think the P88 really shines compared to the Q4. This was from the Wonder 9 area era. It's double action, single action, and it's just small enough compared to the full size P88 that it makes it very carryable. It's not a subcompact really, it's kind of a mid-size gun, but I think it's interesting that, you know, you see it has a very, very short grip. You know, I'll, I'll roll in some footage there, but the the grip is pretty short compared to the slide length. The slide is very thin, and you know, I think double action, single action is a great system for carry. For me, this basically has a single action only trigger without a safety. I will probably never carry this like in an appendix situation or something like that. Maybe like outside the waistband or in a shoulder holster or something like that on a cold day, but this was never going to be a carry gun for me and you know that that single action striker fire trigger with no manual safety i pro i knew i really wasn't going to carry it it was going to be kind of just a nice thing to own and shoot and you know maybe carry outside the waistband in certain situations but to me the p88 compact is is a phenomenal carry gun it it's comfortable in the waistband because it has that thin slide it conceals pretty well because it's you know, the grip isn't like super short, it's not a subcompact grip, but it's short enough that it can disappear under, you know, most clothing. It's light, and of course, it has the double action, single action system, so it's, you know, very safe. You're never gonna, this isn't gonna snag on anything and go off. So if I had to pick one, I don't know. I. I guess I kind of, if I'm being honest, I kind of like shooting the Q4 better just at the range. It's it's very fun to shoot and that weight is just great and it, it makes the recoil very pleasant and, and just kind of fun to shoot. And, and I really like it. The, the trigger is crisp and, and really nice. I think if I'm shooting these guns regularly, I can be a little bit more precise with this and um, I like that about it. And, and the fact that this is more of a collector's item, I... Um, I feel very privileged to have a P88 Compact that's this nice in my collection, and um, I, I never want to part with it because of that. And also, I think this is this is a better carry gun, you know? So, they both have their strengths, and, 
you know, there are pros and cons, and um, I like them both, and I plan on keeping them both. And I do plan to do a full review on the Q4, haven't gotten there yet. I've, I've, I've basically, I've shot over 500 rounds through it, so I've got enough range time with it, I think, to talk about it. I just kind of have to write it up, and I'm, I'm finishing up my review on the uh, CZP-10C right now, so uh, this will be down the road. In any case, really cool guns from Walther, and um, if you're into Walthers, if you're into nice guns, you will not be disappointed by either of these. I totally recommend picking one up if you can. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'm Matt with Hipster Tactical, and I will catch you later.